Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the weirdness of 6.86. With the new patch came a lot of new weird stuff. Let's be honest. When I read it the first time, I was like, wait, what exactly is going on? Slow down. Slow down a little, right? Let's go in and actually figure out what, what is happening. And then I looked at it again, and I was still like, wait, wait, what? <laughs> so what I thought would be fun to do is we just go it and go into a practice game like this and if let's take a look at everything. So I have set a few things up. As you can see, we have like all the new heroes with the new abilities there. We have Arc Warden over here, Ancient Black Dragon because he's fancy, all kinds of things, right? So what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a look at what these new abilities look like, what these new things do and how they feel. This is not really about discussing the balance or anything like that. It's just about showing it off and kind of like answering some questions that people have. I might even do a follow up video if you guys have any more questions, right? Um, we might do a part two if you guys are like, wait, no, how does this work? What does this do? Etc, etc, etc. So let's go ahead and get started with the first uh, five heroes that we've got down here with their five new abilities. Actually, it's, it's more like six new abilities, for, uh, six new abilities if you think about it. But anyway, so uh, I'll go ahead and start with my, with my favorite of the bunch, which is, of course, the Death Prophet. Death Prophet has a new ability called Spirit Siphon, which uh, deals damage, uh, actually drains HP, and it slows people and it has an amount of charges to it, right? So it's not just uh, it has a cooldown, even though it does have a cooldown, pretty lengthy cooldown actually on the charge restore time. But it has uh, four charges available to it to you. So you can't just run into a team and like put four of them down and start draining a lot of HP. This is what it looks like. You run in and you drain HP, right? Pretty obvious. Nothing too crazy there. We get that. Now... This is where it kind of, kind of gets a little confusing. At least it got confusing to me. In the patch notes, they state that the, um, this right here has a break link, like break range of 300. It also has a cast range of 500. So when I first read it, I was like, that doesn't make any sense. right? Because if it has a cast range of 500, but it breaks if I'm 300 units away from the opponent, then it's going to break immediately. That doesn't work. But that's not how it works. Maybe I'm just an idiot, but uh, that's how I s interpreted interpreted the the patch note but uh, what it actually works is like this so i put it on him right and then i have 300 radius i can move around so i can even go back a little overall the range is 800 which is actually quite lengthy so if we see this is about it that's that's quite a bit of range all right that's really really solid nothing to be too unhappy about of course we can also cast this on multiple enemies at once so we can put it on him on him and on now we're getting healed by a lot uh, it's a really nice ability. I actually think this works super well for Death Prophet because this hero needs, she needs healing, right? Like she's always been about staying alive during team fights, uh, and this is cool. It also slows the opponent. So if you take a look at this, we cast it on him, right, and uh, just moves around pretty slowly. It's not a huge slow, but it's still there, and I appreciate it. Let's go ahead and take a look at Ricky next. So Ricky's ultimate. I thought I was at first. I just didn't understand what the hell it was about. Let me go ahead and. Uh, press R right now just so you get to see it. So basically what happens is Ricky vanishes. Right? He just disappears. And all the enemies in this radius are going to be attacked once a second over all four hits. Now, while this is going on, Ricky is invincible. So as you can see, he, he isn't there. Like, we, we can try to stun him. This doesn't do anything. When Once he comes out of it, we can stun him again. But while he's in the thing, he doesn't get hurt. Not only that, but it also is always a backstab hit. So as you can see right now, it's not a backstab hit because I haven't skilled backstab. But let me go ahead and actually get the permanent invisibility, right? Um, actually, I, I should maybe level this up a little bit so you get to see the higher range of, of attacks per unit, per unit, right? So, But as you can see, right, let, let me just go ahead and make it so that this guy faces away from the Ricky. So this would just be a backstab if I hit him like this, right? Let's make it so this guy faces to the Ricky. Uh, so this is not a backstab. And this guy just, just looks weird into this direction. Actually, you know what? How about we put him over here looking into this direction, right? Now, this way, this guy would be a backstab. This guy wouldn't be. And this guy, I don't know, like, he also wouldn't be, of course, but uh, he's a little further away. They all get backstabbed, right? And that's really important to keep in mind. It's really, really important that they always backstab. These are just regular attacks. So if I, for example, give the wiki, um, give bots item diffuser. Well, that didn't work. You know what? Let me just go ahead and go over here really quick. Pick up an orb of venom. Would you? Would you chill? Would, 
Rick, Ricky, please, please, Ricky. <laughs> All right, I guess that. Give bots item orb of venom. There we go. All right. <laughs> Sorry for that. I didn't know Ricky was going to be a dick about it. But uh, if we now press the ultimate, as you can see, they all get the slow effect, right? And no matter how they move, it's always a backstab. Always a backstab. So that's pretty important to keep in mind. Now, this is a channel. So I can cast this and I can immediately cancel it. The problem with this, of course, is if you accidentally cancel it, you just cancel it. Uh, you also cancel it if you cast spells, right? So if I do this and then I put down the cloud, it gets canceled. If I, of course, put down the cloud first and then I cast this, I'm just like, that's not a problem. But that's just kind of how it works. You can, however, um, do this, right? And then do this. Which, while it's not, you don't jump out of the ultimate per se, it's still very hard to hit you because they don't expect you to necessarily cancel it or something like that. So it's kind of an interesting ability in a lot of ways. Anyway, let's go ahead and move these two away. Uh, let me go ahead and refresh this really quick, just so everybody's at full HP. Doom has a new ability too, which is the Infernal Blade. This uh, removes level death, which I'm personally actually very happy about. I, I don't really like level death that much. But what this does is it um, stuns the opponent very briefly. It's a 0.3 second stun. Uh, it deals 40 burn damage over, over 4 seconds. Right, and it also deals maximum HP as damage, so five percent of the maximum HP at max level. That is a lot of damage, right? At level one, this ability already hits for 160 damage, basically guaranteed plus the percentage. Um, at level four, this uh, every four seconds you can deal 160 burn damage, as well as 20, uh, not 20, no, actually 20 percent of the maximum HP in damage. Uh, you will see that these guys have 3,300 HP, right? I'll go ahead and hit him once. That's scary. That hurts, right? That, that is very significant. You can also right-click this, so it procs on, like, all hits. Now, of course, of course, uh, this is in what the fuck mode. If I go ahead and un -what the fuck this really quick, it's not quite as silly. So it's going to be on cooldown, right? And my next attack is going to be a regular attack and regular attack again. And then my next hit is another one of these. Uh, it's an interesting ability, uh, although I am not, like, super blown away by it, honestly. We have seen stuff like this before. Uh, it's nothing too crazy. It's an orb effect. And, uh, yeah, it should. Uh, I sadly... Uh, I haven't had a chance to test this. I'm not really sure how I'm supposed to set that up. Um, but this should count as as a spell if you manually click on a target. Right? This should be, like, Silencer's, silencer's uh, W and the... Um, I don't know, poison attack from Viper and Kling searing arrows and draw range of frost arrows, all of that. It should be like that, where if you manually click E and then click on an opponent, it counts as a spell, not as an attack, which means that uh, you don't aggro creeps with it, which, considering Doom is often played in the offlane, might actually help a lot. This actually might be interesting, right? This might lead to a scenario where Doom could possibly be played without Devour, which is crazy to think about, right? But maybe you just get a casual point into Devour, get yourself a strong creep from the jungle, and then you go for Scorched Earth Infer and Infernal Blade early on for maximum damage output. Uh, if you're playing, let's say, an offlane Doom or something like that. I don't know. It's just an idea, just a thought. But let's get him out of here. This right here is Faceless Void. Now, um, one of the most important things to me, uh, I, I know this is probably not as important to everybody else, but I really care about this. Um, Previously, one of the problems I had with Time Walk, which made it a little annoying to use, was that you that Faces Void only leapt, like it it didn't work like a blink, right? If I have a blink dagger, or I have Queen of Pain's blink, or I have um Anti just blink, I can click outside of the range, and my character's gonna blink the, like as close to that as they can, but they'll blink immediately, right? Like I could bl bl click into the enemy's base. And then my character is going to blink towards the enemy space, get as close to the base as they can, um, but they'll blink immediately. Faceless Void wasn't like that. Uh, Faceless Void was he wanted to blink to the location you clicked at, right? So if you clicked outside of his cast range, then he would walk until he is inside of cast range and then blink. This is no longer true. So as you can see, I'll go ahead and just click up here. He leapt forward, right? Like this is blatantly out of range. Uh, this doesn't have a lot of range anymore. It's only 550. 550 is nothing. Death Prophet has a... Uh, a 600 attack range, right? This, just to give you an impression of how much uh, 550 is, or actually, like, this is 600, right? But uh, let's go then, this should be about 600. Yeah, this is this is 600, right? So if I now click past the nukes, then it's definitely out of range. 
But as you can see, he just leaps forward, so it now works like a proper blink. It also has a few interesting properties. So uh, it does reset any damage taken in the last two seconds. It works similar to, let's say, um, what is it called? Uh, Weaver's Ultimate. So you can, for example, do this, hit him, right? 550 damage, and then we just leap and we get healed up. That is actually quite strong. It also has a very short cooldown, uh, six seconds cooldown. It's an interesting ability, I have to admit. It's not a very long range, so it's a nice movement ability, and I think a lot of carries are would actually appreciate having something like this. The healing is very powerful, and overall, it's interesting. It's, it's definitely fascinating. Now, he also have, has another new ability, which is time dilation, which is sadly going to be a little bit difficult to, to show because I can't see the cooldowns on these guys. But let me go ahead and actually um, un-what the fuck this again. So I'll be using the stun here, right? And now it's on cooldown, I can't use it. All right, fantastic. Uh, we'll see in a second, it should be off cooldown, I can use it again. There we go. All right, fantastic. I should actually, I'll go ahead and use the mana burn um, because it has a shorter cooldown. So let's go ahead and use the mana burn for this, right? And I can't use it, can't use it, can't use it, and can use it again. All right, fantastic. So. What this does is it traps enemies in a time dilation field for up to 9 seconds, freezing their cooldowns and slowing their movement and attack speed by 10% for each cooldown frozen. So if I now cast this, right, and then use this, um, I, I, I keep clicking this, right, and my cooldowns aren't ticking down, my cooldowns aren't doing anything. I can't do anything. This should be ready by now. Um, and it only now is. Now, what you may see is, look at Void's cast animation for this. It's an AoE. I didn't think of it at, like that at first. I thought it was like a single target spell, but it's actually like a really big radius. It's 650 range. 650, yet again, right? Like, this is 600 attack range. This radius is bigger. So if I am beyond the, the Death Prophet, right, I'm here, he gets hit. That is that is huge. That is huge. I can be over here. Let me let me go then what the fuck and refresh this really quick. I, I can be all the way over here. And okay, that, that was slightly out of range. Alright. We need now. Okay, I guess. I, I'm actually kind of surprised that that isn't really Oh, that doesn't seem right. Honestly, it seems like it's more like 600 range. But anyway, you get the idea, though, right? You get the idea. It's actually a very, very big radius. Um, it's bigger than the Chronosphere, right? So if I cast the Chronosphere, this is much, much smaller than this. Much smaller. So that's something to keep in mind there. Very interesting. I don't, I'm don't. i not entirely sure what I think of this. Uh, I, I'm not sure if I like this as a carry ability, honestly. I think this is amazing. The new time walk is very powerful. Um, the time dilation, I'm not, I'm not sure about. Now let's go and get to get to Lone Druid, probably the least interesting of the bunch, at least in my opinion. Um, but he has a Savage Roar, uh, which allows you to combo the Force of Nature and insta-kill your opponents, because that's fair and balanced. <laughs> just kidding. Um, but Savage Roar, basically, it's just you press this button, opponents need to run. Um, as you can see, the radius on this, not as large as the other abilities. Right? It's really not that significant. Right, like this is not hitting. Uh, it forces enemies to run towards the well. So it doesn't force them to run away from you, it forces them to run towards the well. So as you can see, right right now, I'm they if they were to run away from me, they would run to the bottom, but they don't. They run towards the well. Which you can definitely use to get them out of position. That's very interesting. Now, uh, on the Lone Druid himself, I don't think this is too valuable of an ability. Uh, but on the Misha, that's different, right? So as you can see, it's also on, on the, the Spirit Bear. And uh, sadly, what the fuck mode doesn't work properly on her. It works if you do it like this, right? But now the cooldown is over there, whatever. But the thing is, these two heroes share the cooldown of this, and um, they, you know, they don't share the cast, though. So if I have this on... You can see, right, like, Savage War is on my Lone Druid here. Doesn't work, right? We can even wait until it's off cooldown again. Doesn't work, okay? So you need to actually have the Spirit Bear or the Lone Druid do it, even though they share the core nodes. Let me go ahead and have these guys move over here really quickly uh, while we do something else. New Power Cox. Circle. I just think this is interesting to point out. If you look at this, right, like you can still not really move around it. It's still a little hard to do. Uh, still definitely... Could you not kill him? Thank you. I need that guy. <laughs> oh, man, you guys. Uh, actually, please don't start hitting each other. Thank you. 
But yeah, uh, the power cocks, as you can see, like they have this nice little circle now. It's smaller than before, right? Like that's mostly the point, I think. It, it's smaller. It's significantly smaller, and I think you can tell. Just wanted to kind of show it off. Uh, the ancient black dragon. You may wonder, what the fuck is he here? All right, like, what is he doing here? Now, uh, I actually think this is very significant for uh, two heroes in the game. Uh, and those are Chen and uh, Life Stealer. Especially Life Stealer. No, you might say, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Slow down. Why Life Stealer? Why, why? How is Life Stealer relevant to this? Um, at level 6, Life Stealer can infest an ancient creep and gain control over it. Right? Now, uh, the ancient black dragon has a new ability called Fireball, which hurls a fire blast on the ground, igniting the area in a 300 radius for 10 seconds. Enemies caught in the fire will take 85 damage per second. That is an 850 damage spell. I'm not kidding. Uh, let's go ahead and cast it on him. On him. So as you can see, it comes out instantly. That's an 850 damage spell. Now, I okay, do have a hood on him, so I'm just going to drop that really quick. But yeah, as you can see, this hurts. This hurts. This is really strong. On top of that, it has a 10 second duration and a 10 second cooldown. I'm just saying, this is a very powerful ability. Right? And as a lifesteal, you can't just steal one of these dragons at level 6 and go into the mid and like eat people. Now, I'm not sure how viable this is, but I still think it's worth pointing out, right? Like, <laughs> God, I mean, I'm a little scared of this nonsense because this might actually end up being really, really annoying. And um, he can't use it that often. He only has 500 mana and it costs 100 mana each. But you can refill that, right? You could just buy a Wing of Basilisk or a Bottle or something, like cast it on the Black Dragon. Actually, I don't, I don't think you can buy cast a Bottle on the Black Dragon. Okay, that won't work, but you can't just get a new Dragon. It's just, I, I think this ability is really interesting. And on Chen, of course, like, the Black Dragon is going to be scary as fuck, man. He can't just zone out an area. Just like, there you go. You're not going there anymore. Good luck, right? So, yeah. Anyway, uh, we have the new hero, of course, Arc Warden. A lot of people were like, why didn't you buy Refresher Orb in your Arc Warden video? Uh, because it doesn't work properly. So if I go ahead and use this really quick, right, you can see I have this fella. His Refresher is on cooldown. Uh, refresher doesn't work with Arc Warden. It just doesn't work. Other items that don't work are wards uh, and smokes and sentries. All right, those just you cannot cast those. Um, also, another item that doesn't work is divine rapier. Uh, actually, it kind of does work, right? Like the arc warden illusion will have the divine rapier, but if the arc warden illusion dies, then he doesn't drop it, right? It he doesn't drop it, right? That's not how it works. But yeah, uh, what you can, however, do, and I should probably unmod the fuck for a second. What you can, however, do is I can cast this. Then refresh and cast another. And now I have two of them. Right? And they can go ahead and plant some happy trees, which is incredible. <laughs> oh, that makes me so happy. <laughs> yeah, but that's an option you can have, right? And they are just fully functional heroes. This is not a uh, bug or anything. This is fully intended, right? So if you really want to, you can have two of these guys going on. Or three Necrobooks if you wanted. Right? Which is a little silly, but could work. Could work. It's just an option. But anyway. Uh, another thing I feel like pointing out is uh, now a new item is of course the Dragon Lance. So this hero usually has a 625 range, right? Which is this much, which is uh, really solid. If I pick up a Dragon Lance, I suddenly have 755, which is this much, which is better, obviously. If I pick up another Dragon Lance, I'm still at 755. Uh, these do not stack. Doesn't stack. Uh, same for the. Evo lens. So as you can see, if I go and uh, let me refresh this really quick. I don't want to accidentally kill any of my nuxes in these practice mode games. You can only have five enemies, <laughs> but you can see like this is my flux cast range, right? So I'll put it on him. Now, if I pick up my my um, my Evo lens really quick, and then get back in here, you can see the cast range increased, right? So if I if I go like back, I can go in here. Now, uh, the thing is about this, if I pick up another Evil Lens, the cast range doesn't increase further. So as you can see, this is the same cast range, the same thing. Now, what does increase, and people aren't entirely certain if this is a bug or not, right? But what does stack is actually the 8% spell damage amplification. It does stack as of time of recording this video. Uh, I'm not sure if this is intended or not, right? This might be a bug. If it is a bug, then just forget about it. If it isn't, then keep that in mind, right? I wouldn't buy another one of these just for the additional damage amplification, but if you, I don't know, if you feel like doing it, I guess you can. <laughs> Alright, I guess it does work. Another new thing I want to show off is the Hood of Defiance. So it creates a spell shield that absorbs up to 325 magical damage. Looks like this. It just has the pipe animation. Oh, actually pretty neat. I like that a lot. Uh, I'm very happy that something like that is possible now, because sometimes you don't want to buy any another pipe, 
uh, an entire pipe because it just doesn't work for your team, but you still need a magic resistance. And it's just like, ah, I don't, I don't really want to buy big. It's just another option, right? I don't think this is going to be game breaking in any sort of capacity, but I like it. I think it's cool. Now, let me go ahead and go over here. Now, you may be like, wait, what, Luna? Yes, Luna. Okay, so look at this, okay? This is the regular Eclipse without Aghanims. Uh, you can see it's a pretty powerful ability, right? It's all right. Dialed some damage to the nukes. Nothing crazy, though. Nothing crazy, right? We are not surprised by this. Now, in the new patch, what they changed is if Luna has an Aghanim Scepter, the interval between the Scepter beams decreases. Decreases, right? Um, they changed it from 0 0.6 seconds between uh, Scepter beams to 0 0.3 seconds. This m essentially means her DPS, her damage output, is twice as high. I think a lot of people have missed this patch now because I've no, not really seen a lot of people talk about it. Um, but I think this is actually very important because if you go ahead and take a look at this, right? Wait, that's an interesting animation. I've actually never seen that one. Huh. <laughs> All right, that's cute. Um, but if you go ahead and look at this, right? Look at the damage output and how fast this is. Oh, God. Well, we don't need them anymore, I guess. I screwed up my refresh there. But that's my point. Right, that is my point. If you, if you just look at the DPS on this, right, this is so crazy. Also, Roshan has a hat now. But yeah, it, it just deals an insane amount of damage, and um, it's very, very fast. Like, that's the thing about it. It's it's super fast. If you compare it to, like, again, like, take a look at this without the Aghanim Scepter. This is how much damage we deal without the Aghanim Scepter. This is how slow it is, right? And with the Aghanim Scepter, this is what it turns into. I am... I, I am blown away by this. I'm sorry, this is a huge deal to me. <laughs> I like Luna a lot, and I am not kidding if I say that I think Luna might actually like just have Aghanims as a core now, because that is, that is very powerful. That is really, really scary, right? So anyway... Next up, uh, we have the Rod of Atos, which now has a new thing, new attribute to it, which is uh, Cripple Enemy Accuracy. So if we cast it on somebody, we have a 40% chance to not miss attacks, which basically means we have a 40% chance to get an MKB like effect, right? Where it's like, okay, good, this attack is not going to miss. Um, and just to kind of demonstrate this, if we put this on him, right, then he can't hit, doesn't work. Just can't hit him, right? But then we apply the Rod of Atos, and now occasionally he will hit him. Even though he shouldn't, but yeah. So it's basically kind of like an uh, MKB kind of thing. Uh, the interesting aspect about it, I suppose, is that you can have different targets uh, do that. So what you're going to see right here, um, I'll have this Nux attack him, right? I'll put this down, and then I have him cast it. And as you can see, this Nux now is able to hit him occasionally. So yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. It's going to be useful in some sort of way, I'm sure. All right, the last thing I want to do right now, actually, no, the second to last thing I want to do right now is uh, I want to take a look at all of the new Aghanim's effects because I think they're really interesting. So first of all, we have uh, Magnus, Magnus, Magnus. His Empower now makes it so that it's kind of an aura, right? So if I go ahead and skill this, you can see that all of these guys have Empower. I can still cast it, right? I can still cast it. And as you can see, if I leave the area, they don't have Empower anymore. So I can still like give this guy Empower, uh, but then only that hero has in power, right? But if I stay around, then everybody passively has in power. Uh, the, I guess, like, confusing thing about this might be, um, at least the way the patch notes are worded, it seems like the like if you cast this on somebody, they have the aura. That's not how it works, right? Like, you can cast it on somebody, then you just have the regular in power. The aura is only on your hero, right? So that's important to keep in mind. Mench for Spirit. Uh, I don't think actually we need to skill an ability for this. No, actually, we might want to skill ultimate. Okay. So basically what happens if she dies. Let's go kill her really quick. This is probably faster. Okay, maybe not. There we go. But if we if she dies, right, we get this Vengeance Illusion, which I currently can't control. Wait, I'm fairly certain you should be able to control that. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm fairly certain you should be able to control that, right? Um, that's probably just a bug with the with the little setup I'm using here. But yeah, this Vengeance Illusion stays around. It stays around until the Vengeful Spirit respawns. Now, uh, I should probably just move away from this because holy shit, man. 
Okay, we, we gotta get her out of here because she's angry and not happy about that. Oh, wait. Okay, so <laughs> let's retreat. We can kill this, right? Like, that's an option. We can just kill the Vengeance Illusion. And then she doesn't have anything she can do anymore. Um, but yeah, that's that's just like her new ability. I think that ability is so funny, by the way. That has to be the funniest patch out in, in the entire patch. I think that's funnier than the happy little trees. Do you know why? Do you know why I think that's so funny? Because it's basically, um, <laughs> well, you fucked up. Try again. <laughs> I don't know. At least that's what it seems like to me. But anyway. So, uh, Drow Ranger. Aghanim Scepter makes it so that her attacks splinter. Right, uh, she has an Orb of Venom right now. You'll see that Orb of Venom applies to all units. So as you can see, right, like it splinters to the others. Uh, Orb of Venom procs on all of them. It's just a regular attack. Although, as you can tell, the guy in the middle takes more damage. Um, yeah, I guess that's really all there is to say about that. Nothing too exciting there. It's just, uh, I, d I don't really ever see anybody picking that up. But, uh, uh, I guess, you know, why not? Uh, Titan Hunter, he now has this new Gush. Which previously, of course, is a single target spell, right? But now I can just target it on the ground. Looks like that. Has a pretty significant AoE, actually. Like, uh, the radius on that is, is pretty big. 240. Yeah, as you can see, it's it's big. But most importantly, it has a long range and it moves very quickly. Doesn't stun in any sort of capacity, but it, of course, is, is Gush. So it reduces armor, deals some damage, slows people. I actually can see this being pretty useful on a Titander. Because Titander can actually get some use out of Aghanim Scepter. Right, this is something I would expect to see occasionally. Not all the time, but sure, why not? Uh, then we, of course, have Legion Commander. Legion Commander's ultimate now makes it so that Legion Commander and her opponent can only take damage from each other, which, by the way, is a thing I suggested ages ago, but all right. But Leg only Legion Commander can uh, can damage the other hero. Uh, all right. And only the other hero can damage Legion Commander. Kind of looks like that if we go ahead and do all this, right? Like, I can now run in and, like, burn her mana, but it don't actually deal any damage. I can use the ultimate. It don't actually deal any damage. Right. The same thing, however, applies for uh, the other way around. So if I do this, right, and I have my patch here, then I can run in and, like, start rotting, and while these guys take damage, he doesn't. All right? Fantastic. Nothing too crazy there. Doesn't have the infinite duration anymore, but it's longer. All right, it makes it a little longer by uh, 0 0.75 seconds. Patch Ultimate now has the properties it did before with Aghanim Scepter. So it makes it so that it heals him, um, also gives him a multiplier, Right, that's nice. And if you buy Agnums, then the meat has a 4 second cooldown, which I guess in what the fuck mode doesn't really show that well. But yeah, uh, has a 4 second cooldown, which considering how long it takes the meat to return, you get to hook a lot. You get to hook a lot. Um, not sure how much I like that. I think the buff on the dismember, however, is actually very significant. So yeah, we'll see about that. Now the next one is going to be a little tricky to show, so please forgive me if I screw it up a few times. But mm, Kunka's new ultimate or Aghanim's upgrade makes it so that um, that you can drag people along, but they can still act, right? So what this basically means is I, I'll cast a boat here, and then these guys can still stun, as you can see, right? They can still do things. The AOE on this uh, seems to be pretty large, all right? So we'll go ahead and spread these fellas out a little and then cast this again. Uh, uh, I didn't didn't quite pull them in, but at least they got hit by the boat. Uh, let's see how big it actually is. Uh, actually, maybe I'm overestimating it a little. Hmm. All right, but anyway, so so that's interesting. Another interesting thing about Kunka is that this right here now works similar to the Doom ability and to the uh, Sansa orb and whatever the hell else, right? Like it, it works similar to those abilities. So I can just go ahead and cast this and. Uh, then it's gonna cleave. I don't always have to cast it, which is really important, actually. Like, as a Kunka, you often don't actually want to waste a Tidebringer, but you're forced to, and I think that's actually a very significant buff. So, uh, I like that a lot. But yeah, that's about all of the heroes I have set up here. Another thing I really quickly want to do is I want to take a look at the map. I think the map is really interesting, so as you can see, we have this new ramp right here. The rune spot is a little further up top. Uh, over here, we have, like, this jungle area, which this one should be stacked at 55, by the way, in case... You're struggling with that a little. Somebody uh, already made like an image on that. Like the different camps. I think this one is also 55. I think this one is 55. But yeah, that's going to take us a little while to figure out. The new map, honestly, I, I'm not sure how much of a, a fan I am of that. <laughs> I don't mind change, honestly. I think all of the new stuff is really, really cool. 
It's just, I am, I've been playing Dota for a long ass time and getting used to like new juking spots and everything is like super hard. <laughs> so yeah, but as you can see, I can like go over here and hide in here if I really want to. Um, this is still the same. But yeah, this is kind of what the new map looks like. Uh, I, I don't know, I don't necessarily want to show all of it. Like, because you guys, you guys figure that, will figure that one out anyway. Right, you don't need me for that. And frankly, there's not much, too much to say about it. It's just a new map. map. It's so hard to tell what exactly is going to happen. Uh, by the way, I also have a Tinker in here. I just think it's interesting to know that Tinker's cast range is now 650. Which is actually more than most heroes have in attack range. So she, she should actually be able to fight properly in lane. Um, two more heroes that might be not worthy. Uh, actually, like a few more, I guess. Like this Bristleback with his new Agonims, which I guess is kind of nice. But I didn't think it really needed showing off. I really like that the OD, Outward Devour, now disables Blink Dagger. That's very important to me. Um, I guess we could actually go ahead and show that off really quick. So let me go ahead and create, create hero. Old world, great hero, destroyer. I think is his name. Oh, there he is. Yeah, all right. Okay, so, uh, but this should disable blink dagger now. So if I give give bots item blink dagger, man, this shit is so weird. Item blink, and there we go. Like, why does blink dagger not work, but blink does? All right, but. Yeah, so what, what this should uh, allow you to do is I'll go ahead and queue this up so he, uh, so I actually have this guy selected. Can't select him, he's invincible. But I uh, currently the blink dagger is, as you can see, off cooldown and I can't use it. Right, can't use it. <laughs> I was actually like a little caught off guard there with it not going on cooldown, but yeah, um, that's just because, you know, practice games are weird like that. But yeah, so I, I can blink around right now just fine. He'll trap me. I can't blink because I'm inside of the trap. And I come out of it. I take damage. I can't blink. So that's really important. That was one of my biggest complaints with OD. And that's, that's actually a very significant buff as well. So yeah, that's kind of that, I suppose. If you have any further questions or ideas or things you want to see, just let me know. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, of course, please don't forget to leave a rating on the video. I would definitely appreciate that. I hope to see you tomorrow.